today's a fun topic. <laughs> I wanted to talk about Formula One. Like, do you watch it? I don't know that many Nepali people. Um, I mean, I've started to see that people have started to watch it, but I don't really see that people are watching it a lot just yet. There's always like a screening of football or other bigger sports but Formula One I have yet to see like a bar or like a venue broadcast it for like a crowd to watch. I don't know I'm just I want to put this out there on YouTube just to see if there are more Formula One fans. I It's been almost a decade since I've watched Formula One. Um, probably 2012, 13, uh, when Schumacher was still a part of Mercedes. Uh, that's about the time I started watching Formula One. And then came the whole hybrid V6 generation of Formula One where Mercedes had a good domination. I was, I began to watch when like Sebastian Vettel had his old domination going on. That's when I like slowly got into the sport and now I watch pretty much every single race I can. <laughs> And it is a global phenomenon, like each Grand Prix happens in one city, in one country, Austria, USA, Germany, Italy, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, India also had its own Grand Prix once upon a time. Not too many races though, but there were some Grand Prix. And China, yeah, like it is a global phenomenon like it, the sport just packs up from one place I think their logistics partner is DHL and then they just move on to the next one and oh boy is it a spectacle like it is the pinnacle of motor racing at least for me and by pinnacle I mean cut through bleeding technology that's used in Formula 1 cars it eventually ends up in daily usage daily cars like the ones we get to drive we don't get to touch formula one cars but the quiet but the one the daily ones yes i'll give you an example when i started to watch formula one this whole concept of regenerative braking this whole it wasn't even called regenerative braking it was more like curs that's what it was called back then k-e-r-s kinetic energy reusage I, I forget the name but basically it would take energy kinetic energy from the wheels moving while braking it would capture it and then it would store it in a battery for like boost or aiding your engine in like overtake or like where there are gaps in power and 10 years down the line you have EV cars that all have regenerated braking like you can toggle EV from paddle shifters too. It's quite interesting how that technology slowly came down. And then the other part is that... Hello? And then the other thing is carbon fiber? It's an extremely strong yet lightweight material that's like molded via fibers of carbon stitched together. And these things are like space grade spacecraft materials used adopted by F1. Fast forward to like the mid 2010s and now in the 2020s when I record this video, I'm not saying everyday cars have formula one but the more performance oriented sports cars they all have a bit of carbon fiber in their body panels in their chassis in their winglets i don't know and it's just remarkable for me to see how like 
technology at its peak in Formula One racing can slowly trickle down over the years into like things that you and I can use in our everyday average point A to point B cars and we don't even think about it. Like another very interesting thing about Formula One is that they are still cars. They don't use like rocket ship engines and stuff. They use pretty decent size 1.6, 1.8 liter. This car is a 1.2, uh, the Hyundai Exter that I'm driving right now. Formula One is a 1.6. My previous car, the uh, Volkswagen Polo was a 1.6, but the amount of power extracted from a 1.6 in a Formula One versus your everyday engine is like off the charts. The, a Formula One car can hit like 200, 300 kilometers per hour just like that. A Volkswagen Polo probably won't max out to anywhere close to 200 and that's just the precision of like engineering and things gone into like building a Formula 1 which is why I'm so fascinated by not just the driver dynamics, how they drive, like what they do, personalities, teams, but also just the technology, the engineering gone into like building an F1 car and I, every time I see an accident where I know drivers in Formula 1 cars do get into bad accidents with their cars on the circuit but I'm saying I just see so much every time that happens I just feel like so much of money and technology and effort and time they're all gone to waste <laughs> like it breaks my heart every time I see a car collide with a barrier on Formula 1 it's like Oh no, there goes a couple of millions of dollars and like hundreds of hours of effort and I don't know, R&D. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, I've been a Lewis Hamilton and a Mercedes supporter. He has announced that for the 2025 year, he's going to be shifting to Ferrari. So I think it's time I switch team caps from all black silver arrow mercedes to a bright red ferrari cap now <laughs> i've never been a tifosi fan so we'll see how that goes honestly uh, <laughs> anyway let me know what team you've been supporting when you got on if you're interested in formula one if you have any questions, I know it might look a bit daunting to jump on board, but hey man, I literally started off, I think, when I saw a couple of wallpapers online and I was like, ooh, what's that? And just went down a Google rabbit hole about like what cars were, who the drivers were, when the races aired. Yeah. <laughs> Fast forward a decade later and now here I am. Anyway, see you on the next vlog.